Plus Two Bits Jen, also known as Quirks and Stitches. We're going to be trying something a little bit different today, and I wanted to do a planner walkthrough with you. So I've got my iPad here with me. So if you are not a digital planner person um, and not interested in planning, that is fine. You may want to skip this video. But I've got my iPad here, and I setup has been a little bit fun. We've gone through all of our webcams and finally figured out how to mirror a screen with my phone. Um, so we've got it as clear as we can. We are not set up to be able to film like this. It's not predominantly what we do, but um, we're going to try and go for it and see what we can do. So I'm going to utilize GoodNotes today because that's the program that I am most comfortable with. Um, and if there's interest in these type of things, I also utilize note shelf at times. You'll see right here is my row of kind of um, planner accessory apps that I like. Good notes is my my top right now is what I'm most comfortable in. Like I said, note shelf I'm also very comfortable in, and I really do like the way that my pen writes in note shelf. I also really like the fact that you don't have to click to make links clickable. But there were some features of the planner that I felt like worked better in GoodNotes because of that. Um, I haven't played around a bunch with Notability, but that's my next one to play with. And then I do know a lot of people use GoodReader when they're using their patterns online. Um, I do not find that program very intuitive, so I have a hard time with it. So I, I have not been, figured out how to, to use all of the features that I have found on GoodNotes, so I do not recommend the planner for GoodReader. Um, duplicating pages and different things like that just seems like, it, well, A, I can't figure out how to make it happen, um, and B, I just think it's probably better for a pattern reader app. Um, so. We're gonna just dive right in. I'm gonna open up my good notes and um, show you straight from the beginning. So when you open up good notes, uh, it will list all of your different uh, files that you have. So when you download the planner from Etsy, you're gonna wanna hit new and you're gonna wanna hit import and then you're gonna wanna find where you saved it. So I'm gonna just go ahead in and um, get mine. So bear with me, you're seeing all the ins and outs of how Jen's computer and organization works. This is a little scary. It's gonna import the document. Takes it a little bit of time, but bear with it. Click the X a few times sometimes. And here's the planner, it's gonna be right here. Um, I'm actually gonna start playing with the one that I have created for myself. Um, I am mocking, I, I mocked up, it's it's pretty much the exact version that you guys have except for the miscellaneous tab. Um, so when I get to explaining miscellaneous, I will go back to the, the digital planner Etsy style that I can show you what I was thinking for that. So um, you'll see mine Mine does say Jen and her mom. I've made it special for us and we're kind of test screening some um, different features that I'm hoping can maybe work for adding to next year's planner. So I've had a lot of questions um, about like how this might integrate with next year's planner. I'm going to be completely frank with you. I have not started 2022 yet. Um, this was a test run trial. I didn't know if there would even be any interest in a digital planner. There definitely seems like there is. So it's something that I'm going to be looking into um, expanding and doing more with, but um, we will get there eventually. So let's start with a walkthrough of what features are here so that it's it's going to be kind of basic um but let let's just dive right in i've never done this before guys this is very intimidating so you'll notice up on this screen for um good notes this button here is going to be your best friend when you're utilizing a digital planner this is what button makes it either editable if it's like this you're able to write on your screen if it's like this you're able to click all of the links you can think of this digital planner like a notebook with dividers. That's why it's set up here. All of these sections are going to be able to take you to different areas. You can also utilize this um, index 
with thumbnails and get where you want to go. But I did really try with the links to make it as intuitively set up as I could. Um, again, it works like my head though, and, and not everybody's head works like mine. So each one of these dividers will take you to a different section of the planner. You've got instructions, planner, whips, inventory, marathons, friends, extras, and miscellaneous. I'm going to go ahead and just start at the beginning and we're going to click on the instructions. The instructions tab now also has a different index of dividers here. You'll notice that up top are all of those dividers that were on the side previously. You'll also notice that each one of the sections often has these blank dividers with asterisks. That's something that you can add into if you need to. Obviously the instructions tab may not be, divider may not be one that you're going to need to add anything to, but um, I know there's other things that people like to track other than the things that I've created. Um, I'm not super familiar with adding outside um, templates and things like that into a pre-made planner. So when I created this, I really wanted to make sure everything was going to be there for you to utilize it now, but you can definitely add things in. I just don't know how the links will work always. So that's why I wanted to put everything in this to go. And I didn't offer it like I did with a printable version with separate add-on packs. Um, so in the about, it's going to tell you a little bit. You can flip through. If you want to write any um, notes about what's in the sections, this is just a little reminder page for you, kind of like a book tab. Um, and then I've got my intro letter to what the planner is. These are your indexes. This is gonna be when if you need to know if something is clickable on a page, these pages really tell you what is there. All of these here are also clickable. So if you wanted to, you know, if you wanted to, for instance, go to your wish list, you could click right here and it would take you to that. I'm not going to click it at the moment, but it, it does definitely do that. So it's gonna show you everything that's in the planner. This is everything that's in this planner section. This page is everything that's in, the, it's also in the planner section, but it's in the monthly tabs. Each one of these, the January, February, March, the month titles, it will click because each month is set up um, the same way. So it will click, if you click January here, it's gonna take you to the dated month for January. If you click June, it's going to take you to June. Also for the weekly planners, the month plans, the acrostic, the holidays, the bonus, the habit tracker, the month reflection, to-dos, notes, all those things are there. The whip pages tells you everything that's going to be in this section. Over here, if I didn't mention it before, it lists anything on the page that is going to be links other than these divider tabs. Those are pretty obvious that they're going to be links. We've got one for the inventory, which again is going to be everything in this tab. Marathons, everything in this tab. Friends, everything in that one. Extras, these are kind of blank pages that you can duplicate if you would like. And then the miscellaneous is just for you to add in what you want. Okay, guys, we're just going to dive right in now. So let's go ahead and click onto our planner section. Any one of these is always going to take you just to the intro page. Over here, you'll see you've got a tab that says 2021. Anything that is um, set to be like referenced throughout the entire year, I tried to make in this yellow color. I am a color coding person, so you will notice that most things that are yearly are going to be yellow. Then we've got, we move down to each of the months. So you can click here and get to each of the months. I'm going to go ahead and click on 2021. And you'll notice now we've got an additional menu bar down here of clickable links. These are all of the tabs that correlate with 2021 planning, year long planning. So right here, you've got your calendar. Each one of these dates is clickable and will take you to the specific date in here on the weekly planner. So for instance, my birthday, um, is February 22nd. If I click there, it takes me to my weekly planner page for February 22nd. Um, there isn't a super easy way to get back. If anybody knows it, just tell me. Uh, so you kind of have to click back through the links. So I'm going to go ahead and click back to 2021, which takes me back to this page. You can always just flip through like this, or you can also click links here. Under the calendars tab, which starts with this page, 
You're also going to have your perpetual calendar, two page spread, and then we're going to go to this year X's. This first page here that I have is the yearly habit tracker. This was kind of set to see if maybe um, you stitched, you, you can put a, a mark each day that you stitch. I talked a little bit about how this button is going to be your best friend. I haven't utilized this page yet, but you can unclick here. This button on this line is my absolute best friend because I like to have my handwriting as consistent as possible. Um, and this button makes magnifies the screen consistently. You can also um, expand your screen, but um, using the, the like you saw my fingers do that thing. Um, I like to keep it the same and then use this button, which brings up a box that I can put right where I want to write, magnifies it down here, and I can say I stitched on that day. I stitched on that day. I stitched on that day. Um, because I know I think I've stitched every day but one in January. Then it also gives you a spot to put your totals for the month. Anytime you see a month, I believe it it will link to your um, monthly calendar for the for that month. So if we go there, it goes to my monthly calendar. Um, we were in year all the X's. Everything will save on my page. Um, you can edit how you write. I prefer to use the ball pen. And then you can also change your um, thickness and pen color and all of those things over here. Um, I like the ball pen just because I am a straight line, all sorts of things person. The brush pen is very pretty though. And the fountain. In real life, I like those things. Just kidding, I only have one kind of pen that I'll write with. So, the year X's are there. Now we get to the challenges. Challenge pages, similar challenge this year is to use the year-long ABC challenge, which would be connecting your project, trying for finishes that connect with each letter of the alphabet. Um, they are set up so that you can write in these boxes and you can also um, check off when you've completed it. There is a secondary challenge this year, which is the year-long shopping challenge, and I'm challenging you to try to buy some stash too and support this industry. We all know how hard 2020 was. 2021 is off to a rousing start as well. So um, let's support our shops. So I'm encouraging you to support the industry by going to 12 or 24 different shops and um, buying from them. Let's, let's all build our stash. So those are our challenges for the year. Also down here we go, we've got the monthly focus tracker. You can see I've got some of this filled in on mine. Um, these were the, the my original thoughts of things that I wanted to try to get finished each month was what I was using these for. I left the first one blank, just I don't know why. I, I haven't really thought about it much. Um, 2021 whips. These are, my intention for this page was things that you are working on during this year. You'll see that I'm a little outdated with starting, but um, I will get it filled out. But these are the projects so far this year that I've worked on. Um, I've also worked on a peacock, a unicorn, and a badger, and some other things. Um, but that was my intention for this page. We all know that we have a ton of whips though, and so you might want to duplicate this page. You might want to say, you know, I'm going to work on I have 70 some whips, so I want to be able to make sure that I am listing these and I want them all right here. So all you're going to need to do to do that, I'm going to go ahead and copy this page. It will say copied. I'm going to hit this plus button and I'm going to hit paste page. That will do it with what I've got written on it. Um, I can then edit here and delete. Or there's another way that I can do it that was probably even easier than copying the page. Um, so let me get back. Give me one second. I'm on this page and I want to create a duplicate of it. All I have to do is hit this. I can use the current template and I can hit there and it's going to go right after. And then it's going to do it without any of the writing that's on there for me. You'll see it's it's super like I really encourage you just to get in and play with these things um, because the app, you, you'll learn it and get more consistent with how you're utilizing it as you go. Obviously, I don't know all of the ins and outs. I'm still fairly new to digital planning, but um, there's a ton of features you're going to be able to use. Now, 
if you want to utilize, say we're in the month focus, but you want to get to your 2021 whips, it will still go to this page. You can then slide to your additional pages, but all of these links will still work. So if I click here, it will still take me back to there. So they're all still fully functional links when you duplicate pages. Um, that was really important to me to make sure that it was going to be um, working still. Then we've got new starts. These would be This would be a place that you can track all of the new things that you're starting this year. I'm trying to limit them, but it is January and I've already started three because I started a new one yesterday. This is one feature that I'm thinking a lot of people may not realize is there, so I wanna take a minute to show you. I have started It Will Be Okay by Birdhouse Stitchery. Well, I want more details than just my fabric start and finish date. If I go to my links and make it clickable again, and I click this number one, it is going to link me directly to a project page for this project. You'll see it's got the number one up here and it has a new project page. It took me to a different um, section. So I'm now in my whip section, but these are, it will link exactly to where you wanna be for recording on that project. I went ahead because um, I wanted to make sure you had enough space that linked. If we get back to those new starts, You'll see each one of these, it goes up to 16, but we know me, I'm planning to start 82 things next year. So I wanna make sure that you had as much consistency as you you, ha you you could. So if you're a new serial starter like I am, there's 16 here that will link. Each one will go to that project page. I have an additional page that goes to 32, an additional page that goes to 48, and then I have a blank page. This blank page is for, again, if you're a person like me that's gonna keep going and you want more than 48, you can go ahead and you can edit your page, put 49 here. Oops, I'm in my eraser. I'm going to then go back to my link and I'm gonna click right there. It's gonna take me to a page that has an asterisk on it then. So I can go ahead in here now and I can edit and I can say, okay, this one is number 49. So I have a clue where it links to, and I can go ahead. Now, the only thing that's a little different with this page is it's not when you go into, um, when you're on that, each one of those is gonna, when you click here, it's gonna take you to that same asterisk but you can, like we did before, you can duplicate this page and you can add them. You'll just have to access them. So I'll paste, I'll, I'll do my current tab. You're gonna have to get to them by going like this. So when we're there, you're gonna have to go to new starts. Say I started one that was gonna be 50. It's still gonna take me to 49. So you're gonna have to flip through like that. I couldn't figure out a way to, do that but I that's why I added up to 48 because I figured that gave everybody a good place to start from so those are for our new starts I also have a finish list so far I'm only finishing one I want to show you one more thing on this if I go here this finish section if you click here it will take you right to your finished list so that way you can kind of get back to it if you would like to um, like I said before, there are 48 of these, and then also a blank page if you are trying for more finishes than that. We then have our wish list. We have some money tracking. So you've got an expense tracker. There are a couple different trackers in your money tracking. This one is kind of the generalized, where you can just do a, a running recap of what you've spent. Again, it can be duplicated. This one is set up to track it by month. So if you wanna indicate how much you've spent on patterns, fabrics, floss, this is something I don't really wanna think about. I don't need to know exactly how much I'm spending on every single thing. So <laughs> you might wanna skip these pages if you're like me. We also have a rotations page. I utilize this page um, when I'm trying to do a chronological rotation. Um, so you can write down your projects in the order that you started them, or if you're just gonna kinda of go they don't have to be in chronological order, but if you're trying to get through a like a list of patterns that you're working on, that's one way to do it. 
I also created a weekday rotation. I don't think this one was super intuitive to everyone, so I do have an example page um, at the end um, that shows you what I was kind of intending. This is for those stitchers that want to start something and stitch a consistent thing each day of the week. So on Sunday, maybe you wanna do, um, you're, you're doing your Santas on Sunday. So you're working on your Prairie Schooler. I would write it in one color and indicate which Sundays I worked on it with that color, but then I might finish it. So, or I might wanna switch projects or maybe I'm only doing Sundays on that project for one month. Um, so then I might switch to a different um, project. I just indicated that with a different color and then you can X through. If you're on your first one, this is set up quarterly. So this page will get you all the way through April. Um, these links will take you to your planner pages for the month. Um, so you can do that, uh, but, but it's just kind of a, a different way to track your rotations. Okay, so I believe that's everything in one tab of the planner. There's a lot of content in here, guys. Um, we'll do a walkthrough now of the January section. January, each month is set up the same way. So down here, you're gonna see that we've got the different tabs. We've got our week pages, monthly plans, the acrostics, the holidays, the bonus pages, the monthly recaps, to-dos, and notes. Um, so each each month, again, I, is as consistent as I could think to make it, so it's going to be mirrored. I had a lot of questions about how I get my writing so neat. I am very, 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 very particular about my handwriting, so I practice a lot. Um, so you will see that, but again, my, my biggest um, thing is using this, this button here because you can move your little button all over and do that. You can also, um, I do Sunday Stitch with my mom every weekend, so we didn't get together, um, we did it on the, the 17th too. You notice I didn't put anything there. I'm just gonna easily copy and paste right now. So I'm gonna use my lasso tool. I'm gonna select this click in here and hit copy, click down here, hit paste, it's there, and then I can just move it to be where I did. We also did our Sunday stitching together yesterday, so um, because it was supposed to snow today and it did, so that was why we decided to get together yesterday instead of today. Um, I always put the, the extra months up here, the days, just because I, I know a lot of um, planners will do the, the half sheet or half squares. I wanted to, I, I don't like that. I just personal preference. Um, you can also, if with that highlight feature, say I wanted to note something differently with this one, I'm gonna select it. You'll notice it lets me also, um, I can change the color of the text. So maybe I wanted that one to indicate something differently. I can do that very easily. Um, I can also resize it, do all of those sorts of things through there. Um, I utilize the copy and paste feature quite a bit, especially as I was testing out the planner because I would write all of my whip lists in one and then be like, no, but I made a mistake on a link here. So I've got to go ahead and, and go back and do something differently. Anytime you see January in the month, I try to shoot it back to this page. So you can click on to January to get there. We're gonna go ahead and go through. We've got our week pages. So we've got our weekly planner. This gives you a spot to put your projects that you've worked on, any reminders for the week, and any miscellaneous things that you might wanna do. You can go ahead and just flip through this one. This is just kind of a go through like this. You'll notice it only goes to the 30th. That's because the first week, the, the next one is a week that is predominantly in February. So it is going to be under the February tab for the 31st. Um, and then it will go straight into our month plans. So the month plans are going to give you a chance to write your goals for the month, any events that you would like to be doing, planned starts. If you click here, it will take you to your new starts list. If you click here, it will take you to our, your expense trackers. We then go into the acrostics. I think the only click on here is the January will take you back to the calendar. I kind of failed my acrostic this month, I tried. We've got the holidays. Each one of these links will take you to the weekly planner of that day. So I could go to the 21st and it will take me to the month, the weekly planner for that day in case you need a reminder if you stitched on that. Um, I tried to link up some of my 
whips to that, but I didn't end up figuring out a system to make holidays work. Then we've got our bonus pages. You can, I've got our habit tracker here. Again, each one of these is clickable and you can go to the um, weekly planner section for there. Um, I utilized, I don't remember how I did that. I think I did, I co and I copy and paste it then. I somehow figured out how to do that. I'll, I'll have to, I think I added text. And that, yeah, I did. I added an X because I wanted them to look as consistent as possible. So I added text there. I put my X in. Um, I don't remember how I did that. Or I used, oh, I used an emoji. And so I hit the X. And then I just used my lasso tool. And I can move it to say that I stitched on that day. Um, We've also got a bonus project every month that talks about, um, has a like a time quote for you to try to connect a project to it. This is one of my favorite songs. Um, and then we also have a spot to write about your favorite floss tuber that you might have discovered, new designer, stitchy friend, new shop to support, helpful trick, fabric floss supplier. Um, and, and the next page with the bonus pages, you also have a blank habit tracker so that you can maybe say you want to track things that aren't stitching related, um, how many days you read a book or how many days you did that. Each one of these pages, just like before, will click to the um, weekly planner. Then we go to our monthly recap. This is going to be your favorite. You have a spot to do your favorite um, stitchy moments, tweaks for next month's plan, finishes. Again, we'll link you to your finish sheet. Um, expenses, we'll go back to your expense tracker. We go to to-dos, you've got a to-do list. Notes, you've got a notes list. And then if you slide here, you also have a blank grid page that you can utilize for any charting needs that you might have. So that is pretty much the format for each month. Again, each page is duplicated. You, you can duplicate each page if you would like. Um, I think that's pretty much all I've got for that. Let's go ahead and go into the whip section now. Um, first section in whips is your reference. This is a page for those um, acronyms and slang sayings and things like that. I tried to list some that I, I come across. Um, and you also have lines that you can do your own. There's two pages and you can again duplicate as much as you want. This whip list. This is what, oh we can hear Watson because I think I'm getting an Amazon delivery. This is where we're going to have all of the whips that you work on. So you can see I do have mine all filled in. These are my whips that I have that were existing in 2021 um, or previous prior to this year. So these were the whips that I entered this um, year with. Uh, it looks scary when you have them all written out like this, doesn't it? I do. Um, your planner will go up to 48. I added more for mine because... <laughs> Come on, you know I stitch a lot uh, and, and keep starting things. Just like that whip list at the beginning for the new starts, all of these are clickable that are going to take you to the existing projects page. This is where those pages are stored when we went to the new projects and you saw my birdhouse stitchery, it's in there. And like I said, we've got pages that go all the way up through 48 plus the asterisk. But if I'm on my whip list and I want to work on my map of, or see any further details on Map of Hawk Run, I can click that too. It's going to take me to my Map of Hawk Run page and I can um, go ahead and edit this. Uh, I'm going to go back real quick here and I'm going to show you how if I click for a peacock, a unicorn, and a badger, I can fill this all in. Um, but to add a picture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this picture button here. If you click it twice, it will bring up a section like this. You can go through, you can see all of my animals. I can click a picture from peacock, unicorn, and a badger. I can minimize it a little bit and put it right in there for me. And then I can track my progress there. Um, so each one of the whips, like I said, is going to do that there. Um, sorry, 
sometimes I forget to click back to my favorite button. Um, my existing project pages, that's where the one is. Again, if you flip through, you're gonna get through with each of the numbers. I don't have all of mine filled out yet. New projects, this is where you can do for the new project pages. The um, I don't track these on my whip list. You totally could if you wanted to, but they are gonna be clickable to get to from the new start section in the planner page. Each one of these is a blank section that you can add different things to if you would like. We'll talk about that when we get to the miscellaneous. We've got our inventory tab. And again, each one of these sections also has a page for you to write any notes that you would like to in it. Um, totally up to you. Just wanted to give you kind of a, a index page available table of contents right there. Um, so we've got our fabric inventory. This is where you can um, record any fabric that you've got in your stash. Again, this page is completely duplicate. You can duplicatable. I don't even know if that's a word. You can duplicate this page if you would like. Um, I don't believe there's any links on this page. Patterns. This is, um, I tried to think of a way that we could do this where you could have a little bit more structure with just than just listing out your patterns so they would be easier to find. And so I, I decided that an ABC list might be as helpful as we could get. Each one of these is um, able to be clicked then and taken to it. So maybe you want to track by designer, maybe you want to track by uh, pattern name, however you want to do that. But if you have, say, um, Halloween at Hawk Run, I, if I'm tracking by name, I'm going to want to click my H and I can write it there. Um, each one of these will take you to a different letter. Um, they all go so you can keep them as organized as you'd like. Um, the F asterisk is just going to take you to one that then it's, um, if there's like numbers or something that you want to track that way. Um, your planner will not have this frame section. It is something I am testing out with my mom and I, so don't, I forgot that that was in here. Uh, most of the stuff I'm editing and testing for next year is in the miscellaneous section. Um, but again, all of these, and then you know which letter you're on because it is, um, highlighted. So if you're going to want to add more pages, you're going to want to be on, like if you have a lot of patterns that are on F, you're going to want to um, make sure you're duplicating that F page. Floss inventory. So here we've got, you'll see there's another set of things down here. So you can, um, if you have, I tried to think of which Floss brands were pretty standard, but I am, am fairly new to the uh, overdyed floss. So, sorry, Watson is exploring. Can you go away, Watson? You're very loud. Clicking. Um, this one is just a blank one. So if there's one in there that I haven't thought of, then you can utilize this blank one. However, down here you'll notice I've got CC, which is for Classic Colorworks, DMC, GAST, NPI, Weeks Dye Works, and then other as well down here if you want to. But this gives you a good base to try to um, duplicate if you're needing to add additional pages. Um, so if you click on this CC, it's gonna bring up a inventory list for Classic Colorworks. I really tried my best to get all of the colors that they had. Um, I used uh, the Dyer's inventory list. I think there might've been a couple that I missed. However, if you click through, most of the pages do have a some blank sections that you can add any in. Um, this is just here for you to be able to indicate if it's in your stash. There's a section for you to include notes. Um, maybe you wanna say, I have it in my stash, but it's in this project bag or I only have a partial uh, skein of it, something like that. So you can go through, you've got it for DMC, Complete Floss List, Gentle Arts, NPI, Weeks Dye Works, and then other one, other two, other three. Again, you don't have a frame section, that might be something that is coming but you have your other sections here if you would like to duplicate and bring other things in. Each planner section has, so you'll see this says section five, you can either duplicate the section five section 
or at the end of each section there is one that doesn't say a um, title of the section on it. So you can also duplicate that page and put it in. Um, you can drag and I've, I've tried to save templates as, um, if you save it as a JPEG, you can add it onto your page to add and, and then edit and write on. So guys, this is taking a lot longer than I thought it was gonna take. Whew, breathe. Then we've got our marathon section. If you click this date section, it's gonna tell you the dates of all these marathons. If you click this, it's going to go to your calendars for that month. Um, then in each marathon section, you'll notice down here, we've also got some, some extra trackers. So we've got marathon planning. We've got a tracker for you to keep track of what you're stitching on those hours. You've got a reflection page. You've got a to-do list that's specific to the marathon, and you've got some notes. Then you've got three blank sections if there's something you wanna add. This would also be a good place. Um, the one up here indicates that it was marathon one. Um, a good section, you could add pictures from the event, things like that if you wanted to. And then you can always, on here, say I'm on that first one and I wanna make this a yeah, picture tab, but I wanna remember that it's a picture tab. I can go down here and I can write, pictures. I can then lasso it. And I can go, oops, what did I do? You can paste it. And you'll just have to paste it on each one of the little things, but you can then label these as well. And if you wanted to label one of the ones that is on the side, you just have to rotate there. We'll talk about that when we get to the miscellaneous. So that that's all there is in the, the marathon section. Friends. Okay, we've got a spot to track both gifts to give. Um, so it may be something that you're thinking, I really want to thank this person for um, something and being, you know, my friend. Um, you can put the person, the project, when you want to have it finished by, your FFO date and the date that you've given it. You can also track gifts that you've received. And again, these are both duplicatable. Um, I, I think I might have made that word up. I'm not sure. Sal's. Let's talk a minute about Sal's. I've had a couple of people email me and say, um, asking about Sal tracking. This is one way that you can track those Sal's that you're stitching with other people. So you might want to say, you know, my mom and I are stitching Consider the Lilies together. So I can hit, you know, type in Consider the Lilies. Um, let's go ahead and we'll just do this together real quick. So my project Consider the lilies. It's hosted by um, mom and me. We started it on January 3rd, 21. We don't have an end date. And then this would be a place for us to, to put any of the hashtags that we're using. So we're using, we're joining in a few cells with this one. So we're joining in a sparrow among the lilies. So, um, we're also doing stitch lilies on Sundays and a bunch of others, but we don't need to do that. Um, then I can also um, indicate how I am joining in this sal. So if I am doing it, this one is an in-person meetup with my mom on Sundays. So I'm going to just circle there. I've had a lot of people asking me about sal tracking for um, those monthly release sales. That's not something I only think I have one of those going right now. So it wasn't something that I thought of. However, um, I am always open to more ideas and more tracking options. So if you have something that you have an idea for, but um, you are not, they, please, please contact me. You know, I try to work on these as much as I can. Um, and set time aside to do that. Sometimes it doesn't always happen, um, but you know I I will um, I, I welcome any of those ideas because 
again, my head works a very certain way, but I'd love to see how I can incorporate things and make these more uh, user friendly for you. So right now, this is the only cell tracker. However, like I said, I am working on more. You then also have a contacts list. This is set up very similarly to that patterns page um, where you can use um, the different things to, to kind of like an address book. So you can track people's names, addresses, phone numbers, birthdays, Instagram, floss tube, email, how you met, stitching notes, and there's three on each page. Again, you can duplicate that so that you can add more. Um, one of the things we found with stitching is that um, eating is often accompanying it. So we've got a page here for, for importing recipes. I, I went ahead and did a couple of the recipes that we've been known for from our marathons, but right behind it, there is a blank page. So you can add your own. Again, there's these duplicatable tabs that you can add different things to your sections in if you would like. Then in extras, you've got blanks of everything. You know, maybe you're looking to do a weekly planner, but you want it to be set up, you know, you, you don't need my dates in it, or you want um, just a blank holiday list because it's something that you want your own holidays for. Um, there's the grid paper that you can duplicate. Notes um, are blank there for you. Again, those are in each of the months, but maybe you just wanna add it to a different page. Um, so there, there's all the, the extras, a blank calendar. Um, this, so there's the yearly calendar, but there's also your monthly calendars that you can duplicate. So I'm gonna switch planner sections. I am doing some, I'll give you a little sneak peek right now. If you look into my miscellaneous tabs, these were some of the things I was working on tracking. Um, I've had people ask me about like making trackers for like Stitch Mania or um, madness or things like that. I don't want anyone to think that I am taking credit for those things, which is why I did not include a WIPCO section in my planner. I created one for myself, but you know, it, it's really, it's not my thing, you know, so I don't want anyone to try to, or to associate WIPCO with 24 hours because it is Jesse Marie's does stuff thing. So this one is just my personal section. One of the things I'm really excited about for next year is this photo album. Um, and what it is, is it's set up very similarly. Watson, can you go into the living room? Living room, please. Thank you. Our house is carpeted, but she keeps clicking on the wood floor in here. Um, set up very similarly to those whip lists where this is your index page for all of your patterns but then you can click on here and you can import pictures as you go to see your progress um, and then duplicate the pages for as many as you need for that where it would have that. That is something that um, again I'm testing out for next year to see how feasible it's going to work. But in your section in your planner you can change these names as well if you don't want it to say digital planner for Etsy. That was for my organizational purposes. Um, in this miscellaneous section, you can go to each of these tabs. Maybe you just need something that you want to add in a blank page that's not even a, you know, just some squared paper. Um, the link won't be there, but then when you go to here, you can click to that and then it will be right in between. So it'll hold your place. I have a little bit of a border on my page and I'm not sure why. Um, so it will, um, you can do that. This is the base of what I would say the planner is. Um, go ahead back to mine. And I'm gonna go back to the beginning. I hope that this is an organizational tool that is useful for you guys. Again, if you have questions or would like me to go into more depth on anything that is in here, I would be happy to. Um, but that's kind of the walkthrough of everything and kind of how my, the setup was. Um, so I'm going to stop talking now though, because my throat is sore and it is Sunday morning and I am ready for something more than just coffee. Um, so I, I'm going to just go with that. So I hope that you guys are doing well, um, and enjoying and keep making those X's and I will talk to you about planning soon.